and welcome back. Now that you've heard a bit about managing your forest, you might be thinking, well, I have some land, but I'm not sure how to manage it. Or, hmm, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, let's hear from the experts. Oftentimes when we contact a landowner, the impression they have is that they have to do everything themselves and they have to know what they're doing, and that's very intimidating for them. In fact, they have to do very little. Most, in most cases, we walk them through the process. It's a start to finish effort. We, we give them the information. We look at the property with them. Uh, we help them uh, secure financial aid. We help them line up contractors, and we come out and help the contractor complete the work as planned in order to make sure that they meet the requirements for for the financial aid that they've received. So very little effort on their part. All they have to do is agree and enjoy. Or maybe you're thinking, hey, I clear the brush and try to keep out invasive plants. Isn't that enough? A lot of times landowners, they feel that if they just own the land, that they are managing it. And in fact, there's a difference between using your land and managing your land. If you're using your land, you're taking something from it, you're not giving anything back. Management is a way to give something back to the land that you own. It's a way to tend it, care for it, encourage it to continue producing the things that are important to you for, for years to come. Another concern that we run into with landowners, landowners often think that forestry and wildlife management are incompatible, that they're at loggerheads, butting heads all the time. The loggers only want to cut trees, we want to preserve habitat, when in fact, good forestry and good wildlife management go hand in hand. Uh, you can't, you cannot manage for rough grouse without timber harvest, without foresters, without loggers and so on. You just can't do it. Uh, so as a result, people don't need to be worried about that. Uh, forestry and wildlife are entirely compatible. Another concern some landowners have is the term clear cutting. There are often negative connotations to this term. However, here you'll see that is not quite the case. This is not a clear cut. Our goal here is to regenerate aspen, which you could, uh, which our old term was clear cut for, for regenerating aspen. But we're leaving nice residual trees in this stand, and the way we're regenerating this stand is through a coppice harvest, not a clear cut. Obviously, uh, a coppice with standards is not a suitable harvest technique for every single property or every single type of timber type that we have in the state. It fits well with aspen. It fits extremely well with aspen. And the benefits that it provides are extraordinary. The goal is to allow enough sunlight to reach the forest floor after the harvest so that aspen has full sunlight, which it requires to regenerate naturally. Yet we leave the overstory, some of the overstory trees, certain species that are longer lived, such as red oak, uh, white pine, white spruce, those trees are much longer lived than aspen. We fuel the economy, we provide tons of jobs in the state of Wisconsin. We harvest merchantable wood, sustainable materials that, you, that are used in everyone's homes in this state and other states, and we provide great wildlife habitat while doing the same thing and keeping our forest healthy. The most successful ones are generally the relatively small ones from five to 20 acres. And they're patch clear cut, so they're meandered into the landscape. They look like a natural part of the landscape. So uh, within a year or so, these areas grow up so quickly. And, and if you've got aspen, you've got alder, they're, they're very good at sprouting back. And in a year or two's time, it looks like just a natural patch or just young forest area. It doesn't look like a denuded area. So we did a lot of selective cutting and mainly just uh, let uh, the native habitat grow. I had already been pretty much indoctrinated by the forester that it wasn't going to look that great and uh, rest assured uh, nature heals itself and uh, sure enough uh, green power is really fantastic. Basically I was concerned at first when we looked at cutting the property and changing the property but the more education and the more research we did on what would happen to the forest if we didn't do anything and the benefits not only financially but the benefits to the forest itself by going in and, and making some of those cuts and making it look a little different, the benefits far outweighed any concerns that we had and then we were able to move forward comfortably. It's like a crop. It's, it doesn't just grow there forever. You have to take care of it. You know, there are the young trees, there's the older trees. When we did logging, we took the kids out to see 
what the loggers were doing. And they saw it right after it got cut and the branches are laying there and you know, obviously looks very different than it did two weeks ago and talked about why we do that. And you know, we go hiking again a few months later and they notice the difference and how it's, you know, it's changed already and things are growing back. And you know, they've noticed things like right after you do a cut, that's when you can find the blackberries and the raspberries. And they'll be there for a few years and then the trees take over and you have to look somewhere else for your berries. And you know, that's, it's a simple way for them to learn that, that they're learning the succession in the forest and how the, how the forest regenerates itself and they're learning it naturally. Now let's take a look at the results of managing your land and how to get started. The best advice that I could give would be contact a, a, a forester, whether that's a private forester or a DNR forester. Get some professional advice. You don't have to do anything. By starting out talking with a professional, they can tell you what the progression of your forest is gonna be if you do nothing and give you some alternatives that could really benefit your property. It's just beautiful. Um, the kids and I do a lot of hiking. During the summer, we do a lot of berry picking, uh, biking. We have a little pond that on occasion we'll go swimming in. So we just, recreationally, it's a wonderful place to be. That brings us to the close of part two in this series. Be sure to check out part three. In this final video, we'll see the results of managing your land and how to get started.